Hello. So the video that you're going to see um, shortly after this piece uh, was taken a couple of hours earlier. We had a drive down to Arisig for sunset and probably the theme of the video is all around chasing the light and wanting to be in the right place at the right time. I think as photographers, and I know I always say this, but you always want those perfect conditions. And as we were driving away from um, Arisig, we had a good old conversation around light, conditions and being in the right place at the right time. I think for me anyway, um, you know, you watch so many vlogs, so many videos from other photographers. And I think probably even before you consider um, starting a YouTube channel, the likelihood is, is that you've watched hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of vlogs uh, from other photographers that always seem to have those perfect conditions, um, the beautiful sunrise, sunset, and you, that's what you crave every single day. Uh, you know, I'm driving to work, I'm driving home, and, you know, you're thinking about where you can go, um, you know, what's the weather going to be like this weekend. I've probably got, haven't I, about 10 different <laughs> weather apps yeah. on my phone that I yeah. check yeah. constantly, um, you know, as we all know, it is about planning. Um, <laughs> sometimes we don't plan and that's fine. But I think when you have planned and you've done your research and you've had a look at guidebooks, um, you've checked all your weather apps, you've maybe had a look at other people's images from a location that you go into to give you a sense of a feel of the place and maybe some possible opportunities when you get there it isn't always um right because of those conditions and as we were driving to Arisig tonight um we passed quite a few lockens um a big lock and as we were driving there i was thinking oh this looks nice this looks really nice but i had in my mind that we were going to Arisig um so when we got there the, the thing that we struggled with was the composition, which you'll see in, in the video shortly. Um, but when I got the, I said to you, didn't I? Yeah. I'm not sure it's right. Yeah. The, the tide's not in. There's not really any foreground. The sky was beautiful. But I'm not sure, maybe right, maybe wrong, whether the sky on itself will make an image unless mm. you've got something else that that sort of brings the image together sometimes it works but in the location we were at tonight i felt that it didn't mm. um you know and as i said you, you watch other people's um videos and they've got those perfect conditions and you know the perfect composition the perfect shot and i think the small amount of time that you've got um, when you work, when when photography isn't your full time um, job, when you, when you work a, a full time job, you've maybe got a weekend or an evening in summer where you can get out and and do some photography. Over winter, obviously, that's limited to a weekend or or your day off or a holiday or a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> and and you you crave you just want those conditions. But my my point being is that I think you can you can get really disheartened um, when you watch everybody else and um, you see the conditions that other people get. I think you can get disheartened when it doesn't work for you um, and the small amount of time that you've got to be able to capture the image that you want, basically. Um, I think tonight, really, I should have made the decision to come away from that location and think, actually, it's not mm. it's not the right place to yeah. be. Um, we'd gotten there and looking at the time, after having a good look around, wasn't sure whether we would actually have time to go somewhere else or not. Mm. And again, I think, you know, the thing that you hear a lot and... What you should do is wait. It's a waiting game. Um, and, you know, we laugh and joke, don't we? Yeah, all the time. When I first um, 
started in photography and, and was looking at other people's images and I was like, oh my God, how, how on earth have they managed <laughs> to get that? Um, and it is about waiting for the right conditions and I, I having that patience, I suppose. But tonight I felt that I should have made the decision not to stay where we were and head back um, towards uh, Fort William coming up that road it, it probably is about an hour and a half yeah, isn't it yeah um to to head back along there and look for something else but again it's it's learning isn't it so i think you know you you can you can always want um and and always would hope for the right conditions for for the area that you're in um you know you were saying weren't you that you, you don't set out to take a bad image yeah. I, I was just gonna. I was just gonna say that nobody takes out, sets out any part of the day or day off or whenever it is they're off to be able to go and take a photograph, to take a crap photograph. You want every photograph to be the killer shot. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen no matter how hard you try, and you shouldn't beat yourself up about it. It's what it is, and we'll go back tomorrow. Yeah. So we're planning to um, head out tomorrow morning back into Glencoe and back out towards Arisig tomorrow night and maybe stop off a little bit before and see <laughs> get the killer shot yeah and tomorrow the likelihood is it'll rain the light well i was gonna say it'll the rain light. be low cloud or low cloud really dense a little bit like glencoe i was gonna say it'll probably be sod's law that the light will be better where we were tonight yeah. but hey ho um, hey ho that's the way it goes so um we'll let you watch the video and um I hope you enjoy it. Call me out, tiger. Call me out, why don't you love? Lift me up higher. Above the clouds, won't you love? When the scenery is right. So tonight we've come out to Arisig. Again, we've driven past this lovely little bay millions of times and never stopped to take an image. So tonight the forecast was pretty good for sunset. Um, this morning, we drove down to Lock Bar um, across Rannock Moor. The alarm went off at half past five and we sat for nearly an hour hoping and praying that the cloud was going to lift and part a little bit, uh, but it didn't. <laughs> um, but if you're not out, you're not going to get the opportunity to take the image if the conditions are good. So tonight the conditions are good, but I'm kicking myself a little bit because just across um, to this side, I can see that the light looks stunning. I mean, it is stunning, it's stunning all around, but I can just see how bright that sun is as it's going down. So I sort of feel a little bit that we're in the, uh, in the wrong place. But again, as always, trying to make the best of what we've got. And what time are we now? Um, we're coming up to quarter to four, the sun is actually gonna set at 10 to. The thing that I've really, really struggled with is trying to find a composition, which in a place like this <laughs> probably seems ridiculous. Um, but I've struggled with foreground, foreground interest. The tide is um, coming in, but it won't be a high tide till around seven o'clock. So we've had to come sort of to the edge of the water and have a look for composition. Um, there's all this um, stinky seaweed, seaweed, stinky seaweed that I'm not really too keen on to be fair. And even though there's loads of rocks, the water isn't in further enough. Um, again, I know I always say it, reasonably happy with what we've taken so far. Um, this is probably the second spot, third spot that, that I've tried to look for a composition in. And I think that's the hardest part. I just nearly fell down a little bit. <laughs> a little bit of a sand dip. Um, 
But I think that's the hardest part is looking for that composition. I mean, we were here an hour before sunset. We walked all the way around looking for where the best place would be. Um, but yeah, I think, I think for any photographer, looking for that foreground interest with beautiful sky, I can't get over that light over there, it's, it's immense. Um, but looking for that foreground interest, that composition that's going to make the image work is the hardest bit and I have really struggled with that tonight. But um, we'll see, as always, we'll see what happens. I'm going to crack on and take some more photos uh, just so that I don't miss the best of the light that there is and I'll speak to you in a bit. I'm going to have to come back. <laughs> See, it's just messy, you know. Look at it over there. That's better. I can't find something. So this is the scene that I'm focusing on. Um, as I mentioned, I've got this horrible <laughs> brown seaweed in the foreground that I've tried to expose for, just so that it's not too dark. Um, the light is fading now. There's not much color left in that cloud. Um, but I've got the seaweed with a couple of rocks with the water coming in a little bit and a beautiful sunset sky. So, oh, I can't believe, I can't get over the light there. It just looks immense. Um, but you win some, you lose some. Hopefully what we've got will be all right. Um, we're Thursday today, uh, so tomorrow is our last day. It's forecast to be minus temperatures tonight, so I think into minus two. And we're hoping for a frosty start tomorrow. But in saying that, the forecast this morning was set to be 66% low cloud. And when we got to where we were going, it was just covered again in cloud. Um, but yeah, what an absolutely stunning, stunning evening. So I'm just packing away really, really quickly um, in the hope that we can try and capture some of that light that's over there. I think we've left it too late to be fair, but if you don't try, you never know. Um, did contemplate on the way down, there was a nice little locken with a tree growing in the middle of it um, that looked quite nice, but we're probably, it's probably about an hour and 20 minute drive back <laughs> uh, th these are the things that in landscape photography people probably don't show um, the absolute <laughs> panic to try and get your kit packed away <laughs> to try and go somewhere else but as I said if you don't try you never know so it feels a bit like we're light chasers at the moment. <laughs> so like how you get storm chasers, I feel like we're light chasers. Um, to be fair, I think we have missed it, um, but never mind. The, the, the frustration with that is as we got in the car and came up the hill a little bit, um, we only really needed to be over the rocks. Um, but as we pulled up, the road that we're on, there isn't any parking. Um, we pulled in at a little golf club but me being me was no let's not park here because the signs were saying not to park it was for the golf club only <laughs> and me being me was saying oh sod it what are they going to do <laughs> <laughs> so but anyway I suppose the lesson from today is that when you're at an area that you're not familiar with you come out uh, you try and do 
a bit of a recce. We spent an hour there looking um, for, for a composition and hoping, you know, you could see the colour was in the sky. Um, we'll know for next time. We'll know that if we ever come down this road again, we know where the best bit, uh, spot is to be. If we don't come across anything on the way back, this will probably be the shortest vlog ever <laughs> in, in the history of probably our 20 videos. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can maybe um, see what tomorrow brings as always, see how the images turn out. If we don't find anything on the way back, we'll say goodnight for now. We're gonna go back to our little um, lodge have some tea, I'll have a look at the images and hopefully as usual they turn out and if they do I'll, I'll put them up now. So thanks for watching, as always if you've enjoyed the video leave us a little comment, maybe a thumbs up and if we're really lucky you might subscribe. Adios! Adios. <laughs>